Okay, good morning. Sorry I took a while to get back to this. But we're still doing nuclear physics. This one is still on uh, nuclear reactions. It's going to be scattering cross-sections in nuclear reactions. But first, just scattering cross-sections for particles. Now, there's a lot of detail here, but they're only small details, but they're very important. And uh, I've picked my way through this this way, somebody else might pick their way through this mess some other way, okay? And also, I try to keep standard notation. I, I use a little A sometimes for the microscopic cross section, just because people start using the sigma sign, and after a while they begin to believe that this is what we understand, but they don't understand what it is at all, okay? So playing around with notation is part of the job, and in the end I'll convert back to the sigma notation for the microscopic cross section whatever that is. I will clean the board and tell you a little bit more about the physics behind this with no equations, just discussing what's happening here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to consider a beam of n particles. n is a number. A beam containing n particles per cubic meter, that's a number density, coming in here and impacting a very thin slab of width dx and a cross-sectional area A. This one I chose to be a cylindrical shape. You can change this to a, um, a rectangular shape if you want, it doesn't change the analysis. This is the flat case. No particles are skewered off at angles. Everything is straight, in a straight line, this way. Now what happens is this. In this very thin slab, people call it, I call it disc, because it's round in this case, and it's got width dx, going to have a volume by a times dx. That's its volume, okay? So the volume of that little disk is adx. Now, it is this contains scattering particles. In other words, these particles coming in here will impinge on these and they will get their trajectories halted or stopped or changed or something. One way or another, the number coming out here, n dash, it's going to be a different number. Oh, actually, I've chosen n dash to be something else. I've chosen n dash here to be the number of scatterings, okay? So the number that comes out here would be some other number. Call it n1, n in, and then out. So the number coming out is going to be minus this number here, the number of scatterings. So let's say 100 particles go in. 10 particles hit, the, hit these little red guys in here, and they get stopped in their tracks. Stopped, already bound back. How many is going to go out the far side? 100 minus 10, 90. So there are different ends in here. It's important to realize which ones we're talking about. Now the end dash that I've got here is the number of scattering events. So in this case here, with the number 10 that I gave you as the number that gets scattered, that's the end dash here, okay? So N, the big N coming in, is the number of particles in the beam, people say sometimes beam of particles impinging on a disk which has a certain number of scattering particles. Now one scattering particle is going to have a microscopic cross-sectional area of A. So two, two scattering particles. Now they're never in one after the other. They're always um, in this kind of direction. Not, not like this. They're going to be like this. Make it a, a, an area of two scattering particles. If there are 10 scattering particles, each of cross-sectional area A, 10A is the total cross-section scattering area. Now, what's the chance of uh, collisions? The chance, the probability of collisions, we can work that out by the numbers as well, in a minute. So we have the number density of the particles in here, or depending on where we define it, and the volume of the box, this little disk here, is ADX, fine. Okay, so the number of scattering particles, sorry, the number of scattering events is going to be the number density in the disk times the volume of the disk, which is rho n adx. dd is adx. Area A, dxd. It's a cylinder. That's the number of scatterings, okay? The number of particles that get stopped in their tracks or rebound back, because we're not considering angles in this case. So that the total cross-section due to all these particles in the disk is going to be 
This n dash times the cross-sectional of area A, which very often when you look at the literature, you see that written as sigma, and they call that the cross-section. Well, I'm just changing the notation because people get, as I said, bogged down in the notation. Now, what's the prob probability of scattering happening? Well, obviously, it's the number of scattering events over the incoming beam number. Okay, the number coming in, and some of them are going to be scattered, the n, and then, you know, some of the, okay, that's, let's see, what else is that? Okay, that's going to be equal to the area of the cross-sectional area of the beam. For example, well, no, I actually, when I clean the board, I'll go through the physics behind this a little bit more. So, uh, I worked out this a minute ago. Oh, yeah. The total cross-section inside the disk is going to be rho n dv. dv is a dx, okay? Times the cross-section per particle. So, the n over n, which want to get, we want to get to, is going to be n dash a over a, which is rho n a dx times a over a, and the a's cancel. You guys need to go over this slowly when I'm when I've taken it off the board. So we get the formula: the n by the n over n is rho n a dx, and clearly it's going to be log, all right? But we put it down anyway. So the n by the n is negative because the particle number is decreasing, not increasing. You're decreasing the number of particles in the beam every time one gets scattered. So we're decreasing the number, we put in a minus sign, and we have to do that by hand, actually. But we also know that it's going to be an exponential decay, not growth. When you throw particles into a disk and they get stopped, they're not going to increase in number, they're going to decrease according to whatever the relationship is. So the n by the n is negative rho n a dx. This is actually the dv, this rho n dv. Now what's this rho n? It's the number density of particles in the disk. It's a thin disk. So now we can integrate this from n0, the initial number, we'll call it n0. Actually, this should be n dash to n. n to n dash. Okay, so I'll change that to n to n dash. I like the n0 in there for some reason, it doesn't matter. Anyway, that, I, I kind of like that notation a little bit better. So uh, integrating out this, we get, integrate that, we just get an x, integrate this and we get the log. Just remember the exponential log of something is the number itself. So to get rid of this log, I just go exponential log something, and that means I go exponential this something. So we get the usual, n dash equals n, exponential minus rho n a x. This is the exponential decrease of numbers of particles as they get scattered, as they go through that little, um, that little disk. Okay, so what was I going to review here today? I was going to get review solid angle. That's coming up next. The n by the n, I got that formula there a minute ago. It's for a cylinder and it's, it's flat. We're not considering um, solid angles yet. That comes up next. And we get this basic little formula. We'll do this, this one afterwards. And we get this formula, we worked out that this is coming up, actually this is coming up next. That's when we have the curvatures involved. The differential cross section, by the way, is the n by the same. I haven't gotten to these ones yet. They're coming up next. So let's get rid of this. We're not doing that just yet. But I have derived this formula here, call it four, there's is there. This is coming up also, coming up next. So if I put that on the board prematurely, let me get rid of it. Okay, so now, now what I want to do is talk a little bit more generally about the physics of what's happening in here, the physicality of what's happening. So I'll clean this board. And just 
talk generally. So we make our diagram a bit bigger. Here's our incoming beam containing n particles, all coming in here, hitting a disc, a thin disc, but I'm going to exaggerate the width of the disc. That doesn't look very nice. The cylinder of cross-sectional area A and width Vx. Volume V equals A A dx. Now let's start putting scattering particles in here. Here's one. Now I'm going to change into this notation here, which is commonly used. The cross-sectional area of one individual particle is going to be A or sigma. It's units of area, square meters, right? So how many of these does this guy stop? Well, it's going to stop yep. that fraction a over A0 is the fraction of incoming particles that this is going to stop, okay? Of this number n, A over A0 of n gets stopped. Now if I have two, two uh, particles in here, two scatterers, that's going to be 2A. The total cross-section If there are n particles in here, call it n dash particles, it's going to be n dash a. So the total cross section is that, and the probability of scattering is the scattering cross sectional area of the total area. a0 is that area. And the cross-sectional area due to all those particles is going to be that. Now what happens as the particles go in with regard to x, this distance x plays a role as well. The wider the x, the more particles we are likely to encounter. So the formula that tells us the, rate, the way things decrease with, with x is n in is n0, sorry, n scattered is going to be n in times exponential minus rho n sigma x. And that's the standard formula to begin with, and we'll go on about this in a minute. We'll cover the things that I was going to do. In, in particular, we'll cover the differential cross-section and solid angle. So that's coming up. We'll leave that one for now.